Hello, so we're going to have a quick chat about the mortgage uh, formula that you're required to be able to derive. So when we're looking at a mortgage, we get a bunch of money now, the money you're going to buy your house with. And the present value of that, so the uh, money that you get, must be equal to the present value of all of the payments you're going to make in the future. So you might get uh, a mortgage for or 200,000 and for the next 20 years you might be paying 15,000 a month. And the present value of all of those future payments has to be equal to the mortgage that you get, to the 200000 that you get right now. So again, P is going to be our letter for the mortgage money we get, the money we get used to buy our house. That's the money now. So P is the present value, the money now. And that has to be equal to the sum of all the present values of the future payments. So putting that mathematically, we have P, the money we get right now, must be equal to the sum of all of our future payments but it must be the present value of those future payments and in your log tables they use a instead of f so that's what i'm going to use here okay so a is our normal future value and we're going to sum up all of these future values and we're going to discount them using our compound interest formula so let's do what we always do and draw a picture so we're going to start at the present and then at the end of the first period, we'll say we're doing this every year. So oh, at the end of the first year, we'll make a payment. At the end of the second year, we'll make a payment. And we'll keep doing that up to whenever the end of the mortgage would be. So say at T years. So we don't make a payment now because we're dealing with present value. So our first payment is going to be at the end of the first period. Let's say at the end of the first year. So we want to know the present value of this payment that we're going to make. We're going to make a payment of A, but we need to know its present value. So we're going to divide by 1 plus I to the power of 1 because it, it is discounted one year. Now if we make a payment at the end of the second period, we'll say second year, that's going to be our payment. That's going to be discounted by two periods, by two years we'll say. And we keep doing this, and our last payment on the last year of our mortgage is going to be the same amount of money, but it's now discounted by T years. So same euro amount will get paid to your bank, uh, but to find its present value, the value it would have today, we're going to discount it by a uh, 1 plus i all over uh, to the power of t. So we've already dealt with this type of pattern before. This is just a present value question, but we've just left a bunch of letters in instead of having numbers to work with. So the algebra is going to be messy, but the argument is exactly the same as what you've already done for finding the present value of future payments a whole bunch of times. So remember again, you're dealing with present value, so our payments are at the end of each period unless otherwise stated in the question. So we can see that the present value, our mortgage and money that we're getting for our house right now, is equal to the sum of all of these terms. First year plus second year plus dot 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 down to our last term final payment of our mortgage here. So this is a series, a geometric series, we're dividing by 1 plus i each time. So our first term in our series, sorry, when we're writing down our series, we should uh, write down our formula first. So let's do that. a on 1 minus or to the n, all over 1 minus or. Reminder, be careful with your calculator if you're doing a number question and that the power the n just goes on the common ratio, not on this bracket here. So p, value of our mortgage, is going to be uh, our s of n. a is our first term, is going to be a l over 1 plus i. And we have to leave all of these in algebraic terms. Uh, or is going to be one term divided by the previous term. 
is going to work out to be 1 all over 1 plus i. I think I will actually show you this uh, written out a little bit more completely. So we take, say, the second term divided by the first, or the third term divided by the second, as we usually would for finding the common ratio. So we'd be dividing one term by the previous term. A all over 1 plus i. If we're dividing by a fraction, we're going to invert and multiply. So we're dividing by this fraction, so we're going to invert and multiply. Or flip and multiply, if you prefer. And this is going to be very relevant later, that's why I'm particularly writing it out this time. So let's see what cancels out. We have a divided by a, and one of our 1 plus i's here is going to divide out, and we're just left with 1 all over 1 plus i. So that's our common ratio. Final piece is n is just equal to t. Now, we have our formula, and we have each one of our terms. So now we're going to sub in here. So p is equal to a, capital A, all over 1 plus i. Like so multiplied by, and this is going to get rather hectic for a little while, but it's just algebra, and we'll cope by or, which we know is 1 all over 1 plus i, to the power of t, all divided by 1 minus or, 1 minus 1 all over 1 plus i, and close the bracket. Now all we have to do is add these fractions together and then we're going to uh, have to do a little bit of inverting and then rearranging to get A by itself. So if we look at where we want to end up with our formula, if you look in your log tables, we want A by itself and currently it's got this whole mess of stuff multiplied and divided by it. So what we're going to do is isolate A, but we're going to tidy this stuff up first. So first things first we have to deal with this power. So we're going to ha have the power on the bracket, so it's going to be a power on each thing inside the bracket, so it's going to be 1 to the power of t all over 1 plus i to the power of t. And I'm going to write that out as a separate line because there's enough going on here. I don't want to make too many changes all at once. Now I know I'm going to be adding fractions, so I'm going to rewrite the 1 as 1 all over 1 minus 1 to the power of t which is just 1. 1 to the power of anything is just 1. On 1 plus i, power of t. That's this top line here. And that's divided by, and I'm not going to do anything other than write 1 all over 1 here. 1 plus i. Now, I'm going to add these two fractions together. Well, take them away. I'm going to take these two fractions away from each other. So I have to get the common denominator of both. So the common denominator of my top line here is going to be 1 plus i to the power of t. The common denominator of my bottom two here is going to be 1 plus i, multiplied by 1 if you like. So let's rewrite this up here. My a term. And then my big mess of stuff here. This bracket is going to get very large. So, common denominator, 1 plus i to the power of t, and I'm going to have 1 multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of t. It's going to give me 1 plus i to the power of t, minus uh, 1 to the power of t is just 1, so just minus 1. Now that's just the top line, so I have my big dividing line here. And now I'm dealing with down here, uh, my common denominator is 1 plus i, or 1 plus i by 1 if you prefer, so you could put by 1 in front of both of these. And now I'm going to have 1 plus i, so 
1 plus i by 1 is just 1 plus i minus 1. Now, I can't really do much tidying here, but I can do a little bit of tidying here, because I have 1 plus i minus 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. I'll be left with i on this line here. That's the only change I'm going to make. So, 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1 all over 1 plus i to the power of t all over i all over 1 plus i. Now, I am dividing by a fraction here. So This is my main dividing line. I am dividing by a fraction here. So I am going to flip the fraction, invert the fraction, and multiply. This is why I wanted to show you it here in a less messy looking example. So we're going to flip this fraction and multiply. A on 1 plus i. And this piece. 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1 all over 1 plus i to the power of t. Flip this fraction. I get 1 plus i all over i. Now, I have common stuff top and bottom here. I didn't actually write my blue lines in here, or I should have, but I'm going to do it here. I have 1 plus i on the top line here, multiplied by the whole of the top line, and I have 1 plus i on the bottom line here, multiplied by the whole of the bottom line. So I can divide those things out. And I am left with, I'm going to multiply this i here by this bracket here, so I have p is equal to a on 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1 all over i on 1 plus i to the power of t. So it's just rearranging this slightly. I haven't done much other than cancel out my common terms, common factor top and bottom. Now, what I want to do is get a by itself. So I've done all of my hard algebra uh, tidying up. Now all I need to do is get a by itself. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by my denominator here. So I'm going to get rid of the fraction by multiplying by the common denominator. And that's going to ooh, give me p on i by 1 plus i to the power of t. It's my top line there. Is equal to a on 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1. And now I want a by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by what a is multiplied by. So I'm going to divide both sides by this stuff here. So I will end up with p i by 1 plus i to the power of t all over 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1. All of that is equal to a. And lo and behold, we have the formula that we were required to find in the log tables. So the algebra is pretty awful, but uh, that's really all that's awful to it. You need to be able to keep your head when the algebra uh, gets unpleasant. But other than that, it is just the present value of future payments like you've done in numerous questions already.